guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my March rankings video. March was probably the craziest month of 2020. So if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts and my rankings on all of the eyeshadow palettes I tried in that month, then just keep watching. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan girl friendly makeup videos here on my channel. Every month as we close out the previous month, I like to come on here and tell you guys my thoughts on all the eyeshadow palettes I tried in the previous month, new releases, things that I just decided to pull from my collection. I like to include a variety here on my channel, so if that type of video is interesting to you, I would highly recommend subscribing. I also do a lot of first impressions, we like to show swatches on tan skin tone, and I also love to do Will I Buy It's and anti hauls here on my channel. So, highly recommend subscribing. Turn on that bell if you would like to be notified every time I post. I'm currently posting every day, that's the goal at least. So, yeah, if all of that sounds good to you, then definitely join the Karen Harris Makeup Fam. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay guys, like I said in the intro, March has been crazy. I went from being so, so busy and not having any time to try out my eyeshadow palettes to having a little bit more free time. I don't wanna get too, too much into it, but right now YouTube's kinda my main gig. I was working for the family business for a while and you know, circumstances being what they are, I decided to resign. From my position and right now I'm just kind of trying to find myself and see what's next for me but I've just decided to throw myself into YouTube see where it takes me um, enjoying some time at home getting some R&R I feel like I've been working since the first day I arrived in the US if you guys don't know I'm not originally from here and I moved here to go to college and since the day I landed in the USA I've been working from you know, dining services to insurance to sales, marketing, like I've done so many different things in my life and this is literally the first time I feel like I've had like an extended time off period and so I'm very grateful to have my little YouTube family to hang out with during the day and uh, yeah, right now I'm just doing that and I will definitely have more updates as they come along, but I just wanted to tell you guys, in case you're wondering, like, Karen, what's up with all these uploads? Like, I just have more time on my hands, and I decided to give it a shot, see how full-time YouTubing turns out, and if that's not what I'm interested in, then I will let you guys know that as well. But uh, definitely give your YouTubers that upload every day a big hug. It can definitely be very stressful. <laughs> so yeah, I really, really, my Roomba's going downstairs. I really, really just want to give a shout out to all the YouTubers that work their ass off. There's so many people that do this part-time on top of a full-time job and that's what I did for the longest time. So I have mad respect for people on YouTube and it just feels like the beauty community is kind of in a flux right now. It seems like there's a lot of YouTube drama with big channels and it honestly hurts my heart seeing all of that stuff because it takes away from all the good that comes out of YouTube, all the people that work here full time on YouTube where YouTube pays their bills. It's really sad to see some of these bigger channels kind of take away from smaller channels. So hopefully all that can be resolved and you know for me it's such an escape and I'm sure it is for you guys as well. So thank you so much for sticking with me. I'm just going on and on and on so I'm very very sorry but let's go ahead and get into the rankings. I'm so sorry. So anyway I have nine palettes to rank for you guys. Like I said I was just so busy at the start of March. I didn't have a chance. I wasn't interested in wearing makeup and then towards the end when I ended up resigning I had more time so I was trying new palettes every day so there's a little bit of everything. In ninth place I have this palette from Musée Beauty and this is their Le Jardin palette. I don't know if I said that right but I have a first impressions video with this palette. It is a small indie brand. 
I have their two previous palettes. This was like a limited edition spring release. So I don't know if you can purchase this anymore, but I was really interested in the color story. I thought it was really, really cute and just reminded me of spring. I will say that I really like their original palette formula. The one, the, I have it somewhere. They actually were so kind and sent that one to me. That one has a great formula. This one I didn't think was the exact same formula as that one. So I was a little bit disappointed in it. And I think some of you in my comment section of my video where I did a first impressions video of this palette also had a similar thought process that this just wasn't as good as the quality you were used to. I like when you guys leave me feedback like that because it helps me realize that I'm not crazy. Cause sometimes I will try a palette and I'm like, what the heck? Like. This feels different, you know, and when you guys kind of say the same thing, it really helps me out because I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if everybody thinks that way, but it's nice when we can have interaction in the comments because it does help me out hearing your guys' thoughts. And from what I could tell in my comment section of this particular palette, I wasn't the only one that thought that this formula was a little bit different from their original palette. I do have their Van Gogh palette. It's so beautiful. It's like the Starry Night palette. I haven't played with that one yet, but don't worry. Since I'm doing this like full time now, I have a whole basket of eyeshadow palettes that I'm gonna get videos done on, which I'm so excited about to actually catch up on all these palettes I've bought myself over like the past couple of years that I haven't ever gotten to. So I will have a video with the Van Gogh palette as well as the Storybook Cosmetics Starry Night palette. So very much excited for those, but I just wanted to talk about that palette being in the ninth spot. So in eighth place, this one is honestly only getting eighth place because it's a neutral color story, but I'm wearing this palette on my eyes today and this is actually the second time I've worn this palette and it's actually really stunning. This is the Canyon palette from Alter Ego. It's supposed to be a dupe to the Natasha Denona bronze palette. Now they launched this one and the Bloom palette, which is a dupe to her Love palette in February, I believe. And when I was doing my first impressions, I actually used the Bloom palette, which I was not a fan of. I didn't think it was good quality at all. So I was kind of bummed that I decided to go with that one instead of this one. But this palette, I honestly think, regardless of whether it's a dupe, it's a really great neutral palette. I love the price point. The metallics in this palette are so beautiful. I do have a non-affiliate code with Alter Ego. If you use the code Karen10 on the Alter Ego website, you do save 10%, and this palette's only $14, so I feel like that's a steal. They just launched a new palette. It's a dupe to the Pat McGrath. Divine Rose 1 palette, which honestly is my least favorite Pat McGrath palette, but I know some of you that watch my channel love neutral eyeshadows, so I am supposed to be getting that one in PR. It should be here tomorrow, I think, so I might film with it. If that's something you guys are interested in seeing, let me know down in the comments. If you guys are thinking of placing an alter ego order for that new palette, I would highly recommend throwing this in your cart as well. It's so nice, and honestly, I think this would be a great gift. Like, I could see myself gifting this to all of my girlfriends because it's just such great everyday neutral shades and it works really well. So I'm really impressed with this palette. I'm so glad I finally got to put it on my eyes because I've really been reaching for it every time I wanna do a neutral eyeshadow look. Okay, so in seventh place is the Alien Cosmetics Serendipity Palette. Now I just tried this for the first time in March as well and I picked this up I think in February because i had been hearing so much buzz about Alien Cosmetics from the small YouTube beauty community and I feel like when the small YouTube beauty community picks up on a good brand, you know, I definitely want to try it. And this is a really nice palette. I think they still have the pre-order open for this. I believe they are discontinuing this palette once the pre-order sells out. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, Alien Cosmetics is really into their pre-orders. I already have two other palettes I pre-ordered with them and they already opened up like two newer palette pre-orders as well. I'm gonna wait because I don't really want any of the new palettes they're launching, but I still have a pre-order for the Lore palette as well as the Milkshake palette, I think. That's called the Serendipity 2, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm really excited to get those because this palette was gorgeous. I do need to play with this more, but I think the winner of this palette is definitely the Metallics. There's some beautiful duochrome shades in here, and I love the price point of these palettes. I think this was $35, and I think you get some really cool shades. I know this palette aesthetic isn't for everyone, 
but I think this is a really cool palette and I really like this packaging and the quality is very nice as well so I'm very excited to continue playing with this and I can't wait to try their newer palettes that I pre-ordered. Okay in sixth place was this launch from Sigma. Oh my gosh they launched these beautiful nine pan eyeshadow palettes and I did rank them in order as well. <laughs> Because there's six of them here. I just grouped them all together because it was easier that way. But in sixth place, I would put the Spicy palette, which is just a very neutral brown tone. Then I would rank the Ritzy palette, another beautiful neutral palette. Then I put Rosy as number four. And then Hazy as number three, which is a really cool tone purple palette. And then Fiery is number two, which is a really beautiful warm neutral palette. And I go back and forth between neutrals and colorful palettes and sometimes I just love an easy go-to neutral palette and this is what that would be. If you're looking for a mini version of the Corda Rosa, something like this would be awesome to travel with. And then I picked the Ivy palette in first place because it's a very different color story from the rest of the palettes and I thought that was a nice touch for them to add. So Overall, I'm just ranking these in sixth place, uh, but I just ranked all of them in order for you guys. I think the quality of these Sigma eyeshadows are phenomenal. That's why they're ranked at number six, because these palettes are all really cool and interesting color stories, but the actual quality of the Sigma shadows are so, so amazing. So these were sent to me in PR, and I do have a code with Sigma. It's KH Makeup 10 and you'll save 10%. I will link them in my description box if you guys are interested. So, so good, oh my goodness. I would recommend any one of them to you guys if one of the color stories speaks to you. So good. Okay, the top five is like the Hunger Games. Oh my gosh, this is so painful. And in fifth place, I'm ranking the Ofra X Samantha March Life's a Draft palette. This palette is honestly so good, such good quality. I love the face shades as well as the eyeshadows. The only thing is, if you guys know me, you know this isn't really like my color story. I love this palette for everyday neutral purple looks and I could see myself gifting this palette again to a lot of my friends that wear neutral eyeshadows because it's so nice. Like. I'm not the biggest fan of Ofra eyeshadow formulas and I was really nervous to try this because sometimes they don't have as much pigmentation as I like, but these ones just blend themselves. They're so buttery. This is one of those palettes where you don't want to do the most with these, but you can still build them up and make a gorgeous eyeshadow look. Um, I like the face shades she chose. The blush is beautiful. The highlighter is beautiful. The bronzer is beautiful. I like the size. This is a great, great, great palette. Obviously, it's been selling out every single time it restocks on Ulta and the Ofra website. So I'm so proud of Samantha. She really killed it with this palette. And I would definitely have ranked this higher if it was a little bit more colorful because that's kind of what I'm into. And you guys will see the top four palettes. I mean, it was... It was hard. It was so hard. These ranking videos are so hard and I only have nine palettes to rank this month, but it's still hard. And February was also extremely hard because there were so many good launches. Oh my goodness. So in fourth place, I have I have my latest first impressions video, which is the Glaminatrix U Beauty palette. So I will say the views on this video aren't as good as what I'm used to. So I don't know if it's because you guys are maybe not as familiar with Glaminatrix because they are an Australian indie brand. I feel like I heard about them the most from Annette's Makeup Corner because she talked about their Sandra Rose palette a lot on her YouTube channel, I think in 2019. And then I feel like they kind of went quiet. I did pick up their Easter bundle from 2020, I think, but that was a mess with COVID and everything. The shipping took forever and then I never really showed it on my channel. But this palette is honestly, it's worth keeping your eye on. I think this is restocking tomorrow, Australian time, because Australia is ahead of us, but it'll be tonight if you are in the US. So keep an eye out on their Instagram. It's a beautiful palette. It is a little bit pricey. I think it's about 80 almost $90 to get this shipped to the USA. So you definitely have to be into indie makeup and really small brands and stuff like that, which I am definitely into kind of finding those lesser heard of brands online. The brand did actually reach out to me and send me that palette. So I'm so grateful that I got to try it. It has the most beautiful duochrome metallic shades and 
Just go check out the video because I did swatches and an eye look and everything. The formula is a little bit different from what I personally prefer, but it's not bad at all. It's totally workable. I can't wait to play with it some more, so I'm ranking that at number four. In third place, oh my gosh, I feel like March was the purple palette month, so I'm ranking the Menagerie Flight Club palette in number three. Again, this was sent to me from Menagerie. I'm so grateful. I actually bought this palette because I wasn't sure and I didn't want to like message the owner and be like, are you sending me this palette? Like, no, I wasn't going to do that. But she actually contacted me and said she was going to send it to me and I was so grateful. So this palette is so beautiful, you guys. I don't buy like every purple palette that ever comes out, but I do like purples. I think they look really good on my complexion. And I definitely prefer like green eyeshadows. If you guys have watched me for a while, you know I love green eyeshadows. But this palette is so flattering on my skin tone. It's so beautiful. This might be, don't quote me on this, but this might be my favorite Menagerie eyeshadow palette. I love the formula. I love the shades. It's so easy to use. So I'm very, very happy with this palette. And it's beautiful. And I cannot wait for this to restock so more of you can get your hands on it. Okay, in second place, another beautiful palette. I don't know if I can necessarily call this a purple palette, but of course I had to give it to the Adept Cosmetics Ninhydrin palette. This palette found its way over to my mailbox as well. Another palette that I was unexpectedly gifted from a brand. I was definitely gonna buy this myself. I missed it. It sold out so fast. Oh my gosh, I literally wanted to cry. <laughs> <laughs> which is so dramatic because it's just eyeshadow but you guys know if you are collectors if you love eyeshadow as much as I do you know how devastating it is to miss a launch and oh my gosh I was so devastated that I didn't get my hands on this most of my friends got this in PR and then the other half of my friends ended up being able to purchase it and I'm like how did I miss it oh my gosh and then the owner was so kind and she reached out and sent this to me it's so gorgeous. Again, I have a video on this one, so I would highly recommend checking it out. I definitely want to do more looks with this palette. It's so good. Oh my gosh, if I had to get rid of all of my eyeshadows, this is one that I would definitely repurchase because it's chef's kiss. Okay guys, so in first place, <laughs> in first place is, I feel like you guys should know that this is the one I was going to pick, but it is the Circle Loco palette from Natasha Denona. This palette got leaked like a while ago and I remember seeing it and thinking like, is that real? Like, is Natasha Denona going to do something that bold? And she did. She did. She launched it and oh my gosh, do we love this palette. Again, another palette that I definitely want to do more looks with. It's so freaking stunning. I think of all of the Natasha Denona palettes, this might be the palette that sings to me the most. Like, I love Metropolis and I love the gold palette, but whew, I think this one may have dethroned both of those palettes in the number one spot. If not, I think those palettes would pair so well with this one. And so I'm just so happy I bought it. I know it's a bit of a pricey palette, but the Sephora sale is coming up. So highly recommend picking this up if you are still waiting to hear. I really like the look I did with this palette. I definitely want to do more looks with this palette as well. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to sneak that in before the sale just because I have a few other palettes I want to do looks with. But if you want to see more things with any of the palettes I mentioned in this video, I would highly recommend commenting down below because it really helps me kind of prioritize. I love that she included colorful creamy mattes in this palette. I love that formula. I know some people don't, but to me it's so blendable. All you need to do is take a nice blending brush and you can just keep blending those shades all day long. I wish I could get just a whole palette of creamy mattes from Natasha Denona because I think they're excellent. They're just so easy for me to use. I know a lot of people don't really like this palette because it's colorful. It's kind of wild. The color story is very chaotic, but to me it doesn't bother me. And the cool thing is these palettes are magnetized and you can rearrange them. So I have seen like somebody took this and rearranged it and that might help you make it more manageable. Of course, if you don't like this color story, you don't need to buy it. But I think that's a cool touch that all of her palettes can be like reworked. And I've seen some people make the most beautiful Frankenstein palettes with all of her magnetic eyeshadows as well. So I think that's really cool. I just really like the Natasha Denona eyeshadow formula. I definitely used to be 
one of those people that hated on Natasha Denona. I thought her price point was ridiculous and I didn't understand the hype at all. But over the years, she has refined her eyeshadow formula and I really like it. Like all of the palettes I own from her, I feel like she's done an excellent job with the formula. So I'm very, very happy to be able to try a new palette from her and I can't wait to see what is to come in the future. So that is everything guys for my March ranking video. I think April is going to be even more wild because I have more time on my hands so I'm definitely going to be trying more palettes out this month so I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot of eyeshadow palettes to rank because I pretty much have time to do my makeup every day now. We'll see. I'm still trying to figure out like the staying at home thing. I haven't really figured it out yet so if you guys have any tips on that definitely let me know down in the comment section. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. I don't have anything filmed for tomorrow so who knows but fingers crossed I will have a video up every day this month and I will talk to you guys in my next video soon. Bye!